This is just a very short video on how to use Trello. So just to get the basics so you can use it for a P3 Express project. So why Trello? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, there's a very good free version available that allows you to do most of the things that you want to do to run a P3X project. It's very easy to use and very easy to learn. And even with this 10 minutes of video, you'll be able to do almost everything that you actually need. It's very visual. That means that it's very easy to share information and other people will know the status of the project. And lastly, it also allows you to have all the data in one place. And that's very important for our, our project manager point of view, where there's one place to put the data and everybody can go and see it. So how to register? Well, just go to Trello.com, like so, and click on sign up and create your own account and you're up and running. So it's that easy. And again, there's a good free version. So this is the first demo that I will show you now. We will create a new board and I'll just show you how this actually works. I have logged here into Trello and these are my boards which I have available. If I click on this plus sign here, I can choose the option to create a board. So let's say I will create test board six like that. I will choose that background for the moment, create the board. Let's say I don't like that background, so I would change it and use a normal color. It's great. Okay. And you can also then later, you can close the board as well. So by going back to the menu over here, you can close the board and that shuts the board down or closes it. Okay. And that's the menu coming back up here. All right. So that's how to create and remove a board. Next, I will show you how to add some cards. And we'll do a couple of things here. We'll add some lists, then we'll add some cards, and we'll move some of the cards as well. This is a board that we just created. So I'm going to add three lists here. First list is to do. Second list is doing. And the third list is done. Okay. Then I can add some cards here. So let's add a card called task one, task two, and task three. Now you can move these cards like so, and then move it to done when it's finished. And this is basically called a Kanban board. It's a type of way of following up on work. So it's very visual, and you should try to minimize the amount of tasks that you're doing at the one time. The next topic is basically the formatting of the text in the card. So this is how it looks when the data is saved and this is how it looks when you're editing. So if you want to create a big header here, you just put a dashed line below it. If you want bold text, you just use two asterisks before and after. This is normal text. And if you want to create a simple list like so, it makes the data very easy to read. This is how I suggest that you do it. And at the bottom, there's formatting help button as well. So let me show you that in real life now. So I'll create a new card here called text formatting. If I click here, there's a description field where I can add certain data. I just copy and paste this, and that's the data. Now I click on that and that's how the information looks. And if you go back into edit mode, click on formatting help and you get other information here. Okay, but keep it very, very simple. That's the, the idea. I just want to show you that you can make text stand out when you enter these cards information. Next is adding a checklist. So we want to add a checklist to a card. And this makes it very easy then to follow up on different criteria that you might add to something which you're going to deliver. So let me show you how to do this. First, let me show you again what we're going to do. So I've added this card here already. You can see we have a description up here, and this is the quality criteria or the requirements that the product has to pass before it can be delivered. And once they're delivered like that, they can be clicked off, okay? So let me show you how to create this. So we have a new card here. Let's take this one. I add a checklist here, then I type in the name, 
of it like so, and it appears like so. So I can go here, requirement one, and I can put in requirement two, and so on. Okay, so that's how to add checklists, and they're really good to be able to use. The next feature I want to show you is how to copy a board. And this feature can come in very handy, especially when setting up a new board for a project. So let's say I want to get started with a new board for a new project. So uh, for example, I could go to Google here, just type in P3X template board, and Google will be able to find it for you. And this this one that comes up here, P3X template board, okay? So it's a public board, that's why you can open it. It's marked public here. So you can mark it private or public. And now uh, we, we only have read access to this board. So we want to be able to copy it for our own project. So in this case here, then I will click on show menu, click on more, and I will copy it in. I'm going to call this project, let's say one. Okay, I'm going to say keep all the cards. It's copied it. And now I've got my new project board over here. And now I can start editing it. And I've got basically all the layout from uh, the template board that was provided. So that makes it easy to get started. And that's actually activity four in P3X. Next is how to invite a person to a project board. And this is something which you will do quite a lot. Okay, so that's the menu that we'll use, but let me show you how to do this. This is the board that I've just created. So it's project one. If I click here on invite, I can then type in the name of the person. You can modify this text and click on send invite. And they will get an invitation email, which will give them a link to this board. That makes it easy. And then it will appear in their board list, like so. Next topic is how to add a date or a due date to a card. So there is an option on each card, like so, a due date, and you can select the date, and then it will show up on the card like this, March the 12th. So let me show you. So I can select a card like so, select the due date, put in a past due date because I want to show it up as red, like so, that will show as red, put in a future due date, and that will show up as normal text, like so. So when it goes over, it shows up as red. So you can decide to use that feature or not. Next is how to use labels with the cards. And this is really useful because it makes the cards then very visual. So for example, these are some choice of labels that we have and the labels can appear on the card like this. So done could mean that the product requirements have been done or it does mean that. And product done, that means it's being created and handed over, okay? So let me show you how to do that. So let's say that we've documented this product here and that the requirements have been finished. So we will choose a label to say requirements done, like so, and now it will appear like that. Then when it goes into its monthly cycle, then the person who's creating the product could actually say, well, it's currently in development, so it's been acted upon right now. And then when it's created and handed over and completed, we then hand it, we take this away, and we put in product on. So it ends up then with two green labels. So it makes the cards of the whole project then very visual. We can see which requirements have been done, which are complete, and which products have also been completed, and which products are left or have to even start. The last feature which I will show you is actually a common question that I get, is how to see the next tasks to do. So let me just show you this quickly. So here I am logged in as Michelle, who is a project manager on the sample project. If I click here on the profile and click on cards, you can see here that you see the different dates and her tasks that she's been assigned to. So that's one way of seeing the tasks that you have to do. And you can then choose the cards here last month or last year. Okay, that's one way of doing it. So that was a quick overview of all the main features from Trello that you will use for a PG Express project. And hopefully I'm under 10 minutes. If I miss something, 
then just send me an email and I can always add it onto this video later. Okay, so thanks for watching and success with your projects.